As the lockdown continues, no doubt different sectors have been affected and education is not left out. Today, we look at the impact of the lockdown on education with a focus on children in slum areas and those from rural areas. Arami De Akin Temihi, the founder of Talent, Talent Mine Academy, a free school for children from rural area in Ogun State, says she she says not have access to internet remains a challenge for education to continue during this lockdown. Let's listen to her. It doesn't be so easy coping with the coronavirus thing because as far as I'm concerned, uh, a lot of my work in the classroom, you know, has been brought to a stop. And this is because the kids I teach, they are not technology inclined. Their parents don't even have smartphones uh, through which I can contact them, you know. So basically, my operations in my classroom is on hold up to whatever we resume. And for me, it's really painful because we're just about to start the examination and, you know, we're doing revision and revision and revision. But then, now that uh, the coronavirus has come, I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know if they are going to remember whatever, you know, has been revised. I really don't know how the examination is going to turn out. And this is really painful for me because I, I'm, uh, I'm really trying to monitor the assessment and, you know, but then now I can't really, really monitor it as much as I would because, you know, they've gone on a long break, almost two weeks, and God knows when we are going to resume again. So I want four kids in my classroom face, you know. They, there's no technology. They live in a low-income economy, and there's no smartphone. In the studio to discuss this and more as it affects children in slum communities is Dr. Ruth Eber, Head of Operations of Slum to School Africa. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. What's your reaction to what she just said? Um, it's um, a known challenge that um, children who are living in slums and remote communities um, face certain challenges even on a more regular day and um, those challenges are even more aggravated now with the lockdown in terms of access to um, quality education, um, devices for virtual learning and all of that. So it's just a more severe challenge that they're experiencing currently. For someone that deals with them directly, what are some of the highlights now that worries you? Um, all right, so access to quality education is definitely there, but we also have in this kind of communities very high cases of um, child abuse, of um, early child, you know, like marriage and just general sexual abuse and being locked up, you know, in, in such um, environments where they don't have access to mentors like they usually would when they can move around, you know, it's just a really great concern for me and the organization as a whole. Uh, we hear children, uh, you know, a lot of children we see, we hear on radio, we see them going online trying to take advantage of the resource that is there. How does this translate to children in areas where, I mean, access to the internet is really limited? All right, so first of all, um, the initiative to um, provide access to education through e-learning platforms is one that is commendable. But yet again, when it translates to underserved communities, it's still a challenge because the there are power issues, there are um, issues with internet supply, you know, even access to such devices. So though it's a commendable um, effort, you know, we still need to look at measures to ensure proper implementation in underserved communities or else these children will be back to where they started before they had access to quality education. So what precisely are some of these challenges these children face and how has this lockdown aggravated it? All right, so um, generally um, there's the problem of or the challenge of access and access usually starts from, um, you know, their parents even allowing them to go to school in the first place because a lot of parents believe that the children should be, you know, maybe selling in the marketplace or hawking on the streets or, you know, doing one thing or the other or married off to somebody someplace. But when we start our programs, for instance, at Slum to School, we always start with advocacy and we try to educate parents and caregivers, you know, on why it is important for their children to be in school. So with the lockdown, it's very possible that a lot of caregivers revert to this and will have their children in marketplaces. So it's not just um, a challenge of them being exposed to the virus, it's also the challenge post, you know, the outbreak. These children will 
not be able to get back to school because their parents believe that they should remain in you know such areas. We're going to have lots of children with um, a lot of psychosocial issues because we've um, counseled children in slum to school who have been emotionally abused, sexually abused, physically abused, and you know now that is just going to be. I mean, tensions are high generally because it's it's a lot tougher for everyone, you know, in so many regards. So you can imagine children remaining home or remaining in closed areas with abusers. So we're going to have um, much more of those cases. Um, for every time children go on breaks, especially like long breaks, we have like a heightened case of, um, ha have heightened cases of, um, yeah, not just abuse, but children who drop out of school or girls who are pregnant, you know, and so um, this is something that is going to be aggravated by the lockdown. It's sad, but it's a reality that we should all be prepared to face post. You know, How can pandemic. we help them collectively at this time? I know it's hard for a lot of persons, but there's still something that can be done. Definitely. All right, so in the, in the regard or in the respect of quality education or still granting access, um, if we're able to get devices, um, educational devices with apps that, um, you know, just combine the things that enable them to learn, for instance, devices that can run for long hours, you know, without necessarily needing to charge. Yeah, I was actually going to go there yeah. and say, what about people that don't see light? Yeah, I mean. ex exactly. So, you know, it's it's better than nothing at the end of the day. So if we can provide those devices with um, just specific educational apps, it would really go a long way. If we can pro provide psychosocial support. So I know that, for instance, um, our organization is working in partnership with certain organizations to ensure that they still have a call line. If there is anything, they could still call. You know, they still have access to their mentors on various platforms so that they can always share what is going on and we still have access to them. So I believe that if we do this um, on a large scale, if more organizations and more individuals are deliberate and the government as well is deliberate about paying attention to these challenges, we'll definitely find a way through, no matter how difficult Have you had any conversation with government on this since uh, the lockdown began? Are there any specific measures that you know off that have been put in, sp in place for these children? Well, um, there's just a, the, general, um, the general approach to access to quality education, you know, through the e-learning platforms, um, which is accessible by quite a number of communities, but not all communities, because you still have the challenges of electricity, you still have the challenges, I mean, there are communities that have no access to electricity at all. So, you know, in such situations, the challenges are still there, but in, in, in communities where they have access to, you know, light, no matter how, like, um, like irregular, they have access to at least some kind of internet um, services um, and children who have devices maybe because they've been under an organization or a program that give them access to this. The, 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 the programs in place by the government is really beneficial to them. Thank you very much for yeah. joining us on the news. Thank you.